Hey to you. I want to welcome you to another episode of How I Animate Clip Studio Paint. Okay, so today's episode, we're going to dive deeper into vector layers and blending modes and how they can be used together. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button and let's get straight into that video. I know you're thinking, what the heck is this? Well, this is just an animation that I did when I was testing out the time-lapse new feature that um, Clip Studio just added. I'll do a video on how to use that um, next time. But let's get straight into these vector layers. So one of the first things you want to do is come up and create a new vector layer, right? We're going to get rid of this. And when you create this new vector layer, I want you to do this first. First thing I want you to do is click on your eraser tool, then come over to your tool properties. And when you come over to your tool properties, I want you to come down and make sure that vector eraser is on. And then next to vector eraser, I want you to erase up to intersection. This is very important because it's going to make your animation or your drawings either way, whatever you're doing. But I use this for animation when I'm animating a much, much easier. So let me give you an example. So I'm gonna come over to my pen tool. And when you come over to your pen tool, I want you to also go to your tool property settings and go to vector magnet. Now I bring mine all the way up. Some people don't, they wanna have a little bit more freedom, but I like mine all the way up for the most part. Sometimes I'll bring it down maybe one, but I usually all the way up. And then I use the G pen, not the real G pen, but just the G pen. So let me give you an example of what this eraser does when you're using a vector layer. So I got my pen tool and I'll draw a line. Oh, let's make that line just a little bit bigger. So we got this line here and then I draw another line. When I'm using a vector layer, I can come over to this eraser. Now it's a vector eraser. And I just swipe that and it erases only up to the intersection, which makes it amazingly uh, uh, quicker. It just makes it so much quicker when you're trying to hurry up and finish, finish an animation and finish a bunch of drawings. So I give you this example here. Let's get rid of the background. And let's get rid of this overlay. And I am going to come over to the original drawing of this, All right? Turn this on. So if I come over here with a new vector layer, I wanna give you the most realistic example I can. Come over to a vector layer, bring my pen back. And let's say I just go straight across and then I wanna come back over here and I want to come back over here right I don't have to worry about being right on point because it's just going to erase it straight to the intersection and then I can just finish my drawing you know oops but that's just the type of amazing aspects that clip studio has so when you're drawing your lines, you don't have to slow down because usually when you slow down to draw something, you actually start to wiggle and shake a little bit. So these, you can do a much better, uh, much better, better consistent lines when you're drawing. So you could just do a straight stroke across. You don't have to worry about this extra because you're gonna come across right there and then you just erase up to the intersection. Just amazing, just great. Okay, so the next option that you have when using these vector layers, from these lines that you draw, you have the option to actually do a line thickness correction. So where it says correct lines, it right here. Now, it may look like this when you first start, but you just come down to adjust line width. And with adjust line width, you can come over to your tool properties. And in your tool properties, you have options to thicken the line. So you turn it up. This is how many, um, how big, how thick you want the lines to get thickened. So you just come over, 
and just draw right over the line, right? And if you wanna make it thinner, just keep drawing over it until it gets to the point where you want it uh, thin enough. Now, I'm pretty sure you hear this a lot from people that draw, teach tutorials on how to draw, and it just gives your uh, drawing uh, just a little bit more dynamic feeling when you have thinner lines far further away or supposed to be further away in the perspective. So that's another great option. So let's go back and recap what these, uh, what these vector layers can do, right? So with the vector layer, you have the option Let's draw a new line. You have the option to be able to draw full, quick, confident lines and not have to worry about it going too far or turning a corner too fast or turning a corner too wide or slowing down and having raggedy looking lines and uh, or not confident lines. And you also have the uh, ability to do things like um, intersection erasing. These vector erasers are dynamic. So if I go down here, I can change these settings and that's why we got this whole line eraser. It will just erase that one line and you don't have to worry about erasing everything else. Let me put some lines back over. Go back to the eraser. Remember, we already did erase to intersection, which is always great. And then you have a normal vector eraser. So it'll erase like any, like your eraser, eraser did in the first place. So let's move on to blending modes. Okay, so blending modes. Blending modes is about adding that extra oomph to whatever you've drawn already. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that out. And I want to, I'm gonna take this vector layer, which you can do and I am going to just put a circle in the middle, right? And you can use in most of these tools. You just can't do um, like fill-ins and stuff like that. It has to be lines. So I'll take this and I will select it and add a dark, let's do a dark orange, like a something like that, right? and I'll put the color on a raster layer. And then, so I'll take another raster layer, put it on top of the color and just use yellow and just draw the yellow on top, right? And then I come up to blending modes and do things like a soft light hard light, overlay, and you see these are the different interactions that happen when you have your blending modes and different modes. So you got things like darken, of course it's gonna make it darker, that's self-explanatory. Most people use the multiplier for darkening things, but darken works too. And you got linear burn, and so on and so forth. So you got screen. So what you'll be doing is basically um, going through these blending modes, trying to find the thing that's closest to what you're looking for in your drawing. Now, a couple of these things are very, very self-explanatory. You wanna add glow to something, you can add glow, that's what it's called. Or you can glow dodge or color dodge or screen. You're just trying to give it that extra glow aspect. So what I wanna do right now is add another aspect that we talked about in the last tutorial, which is clip to layer below. So now it's only on the ball or the circle that we made, right? And with that, I'm gonna go and add glow. And with that glow, I want to come to blur, I mean filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I just wanna blur it a little bit. I uh, do about 60 something, something in the 60 range. It's not a, it's not a science. And then I can take another raster layer right over the top. Me zoom in a little bit and I wanna do the same thing. Clip this layer to the layer below. And what I'm gonna do is 
just give it that little edge to get rid of the line. But I want to actually do a different blending mode from what we have already. And let's see what's what's going to work best. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to go with um we're going to go with the glow. And then I'm going to add another layer behind it. Soft brush in the background. And then do another guys and blur. Around 60 or 50 or something. And with those blending modes, now we look like, actually, let me darken this so you can see a little bit better. See that, the, the glow. Now we have, look like we have a glowing circle. These blending modes can help you turn something as simple as some lines to looking like lightning. So that's my quick overview of blending modes. So we touched on vector layers and all of the things that you can do with those and blending modes. And some of the things that you can do with those blending modes are much more complicated, much more um, driven by perspective and what you're trying to accomplish with them. Other than that, I hope you guys can animate more and have a little bit more clean finished product when you get done. But I'm gonna get out of here. So as always, Anime life forever.